This is your daily briefing and your most welcome to it. Um, just kick off with a few lines here from Phil McNulty for the BBC, which I think is a pretty good way to open um, a review of uh, last night's events. If Antonio Conte needed to present Chairman Daniel Levy with any more evidence for the need of serious investment in the squad, a DVD of this Carabao Cup semi-final with Chelsea would surely seal the deal. Conte's burning desire and ambition for success makes him a demanding manager. And there's nothing wrong with that given his stellar record with Juventus, Chelsea, Inter Milan. Um, absolutely, it was all very predictable. Let's 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 be straight with each other. Um, but there was a sense of inevitability. Um, you know, we were just like the the grazing dinosaurs watching the meteorite <laughs> approach the planet. Um, Pre-match, um, the corporate tweet from the club was frankly terrifying um that's something that needs looking at they never get it right but they, they really needs looking at um easy to mock social media content but this was way beyond anything i even i had uh, thought they were capable of an elite football team begging for belief and that's the problem the whole thing is founded on a misplaced sense of belief these owners have been a complete failure. And I'm not saying that as a knee jerk on the strength of a couple of games, but just generally, this is the same graph and it's the same line and it's going down the page. Um, we haven't done a Leeds. Well done, we didn't do a Leeds, but we have done an Enig. And I'm, do you know, it'd be great if that went into the language, if that became something that people actually used. And I explain in language that even the, the uh, Levy Sea Lions can hopefully grasp. To do a Leeds, blow all your money wildly on players that don't work together effectively. Agreed. You know, doomsday scenario. Absolutely appalling situation for any club to find itself in. Um, and you wallowing in a suffocating dead to do an enoch blow all your money on infrastructure and create a suffocating dead whilst putting together a team that doesn't work effectively together so it's the same it, what we've got are two paths to the same sorry outcome the core business of Enoch is football, and they've completely lost sight of that, systematically undermining it with poor judgment, cowardice, and exposing it to their own special Enoch brand of contempt. The only side in Europe's top five leagues that didn't buy a player for over 500 days, under a really good coach who had some great players at the time. I've noticed on social media people making uh, a sort of re renewed play for this sort of Enoch out thing. I, I hate to break it to you, but it isn't going anywhere. Enoch are the investors. This is the end of the rainbow. And if you want to protest, that's fine. Be my guest, but don't expect change. You, it's too late. You missed the boat. They demolished the lane. I think we're beyond the point now with the Leviologists and the apologists for this fundamental lack of success hocked up to our eyeballs nobody can come in and take this business over and make a profit in their lifetime the, the numbers simply don't add up and this is the whole deal with the Enoch thing we were so patronized by all of their supporters um, and it was this absolute certainty that this was the right way this was the smart way and there's a great line in uh, Religious the Bill Maher documentary and he says the other guys are selling certainty not me, I'm on the corner with doubt I take no pleasure in saying to you I didn't have any sense of certainty about this, this mission this crazy idea to build this spaceship Nobody, who asked for it? I didn't ask for it, did you ask for it? And further, further weight upon the shoulders of the nitwits that tried to challenge our common sense and, and reason and rational thought when we were trying to combat this Enoch lunacy. Conte on Tongi Dombele. It was a tactical decision, but before I take the decision, I don't take the decision if I don't consult the club. There is a club line and I have to follow the club line. Hallelujah. There's no transfer committee. There's no consultations. Everything goes through Daniel Levy. And that's why the stadium was so, so desperately behind schedule. And just on last night, if I may, call me all the names under the sun. I've heard it all. I really don't care. But can we start fining people who go to games and collapse? 
I'm really not interested in what ails these people, but I do know this didn't used to be a thing. In my day, games were only stopped if there was a streaker or a dog. And single mothers grifting for likes, using their children as bait. No thanks. And people begging for shirts. When did that become a thing? All of the above could be addressed with liberal amounts of self-respect. Not feeling great? Duh, one, one, one. Looking for some meaningful affection? Try not flirting with complete strangers online. Want a shirt? Save up and buy one. Next up are the Arsenal. I can't wait. Um, I'm not enjoying this, don't get me wrong. Um, there is a sense of, phew, well, I'm not a complete idiot because I was right all along, but I'm not enjoying this at all. This is, this is humiliating. And we're being undermined. As fans, we're being undermined by these, these nitwits. And I've got to use that language, otherwise I'll, I'll, I'll get arrested. <laughs> if I said what I wanted to say, I, I, there'd be a policeman coming through that door. Yeah, Arsenal. Oh, fantastic. Can't wait. Good luck, and despite them, keep it on.